In this video, I wanna give you some super quick, simple tips and techniques for adding depth and dimensionality to your images. One of the biggest challenges when you're trying to learn to be an illustrator to create cool stuff is how do you add depth? How do you give solidarity, dimensionality to your scenes? How do you make it feel as if the viewer is there? Let's get started. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. Now, all of the tools and techniques and theories and ideas that I use to create my comics and all of my professional work are things that I also teach. So if you're interested in learning more about the line and color style, you can actually check out my free quick start guide. It's aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop, creating your own line and color style. You get access to all of the Photoshop brushes, PSDs and ideas that I use in that quick start guide. It's free, link will be in the description go check it out. Okay, so the fundamental principles here are pretty simple. The first thing is overlapping shape. The second thing is to make sure that we have a foreground, middle ground, and background. Third tool that always tends to work is atmospheric perspective. The fourth concept that I think is really key here is the idea of telling the story of depth within your scene. You can tell this story with perspective in general. So just making sure that your images have structure, you understand where the viewer is in relation to the subject, that that is a really important thing. But also what we need to overlay on that is just the idea that there are other ways we can use the environment and all of the bits and pieces that go into your image to help and accentuate telling the story of depth within the scene. It's a conceptual thing that we can use both in the beginning phase at the thumbnail and at the very end. Now, I wanna talk about this for creating scenes, but also how you can add depth to images that are inherently a little bit more flat and static, which I think is just as important. And I'll also take you through the technical ways that I do this in Photoshop using layers. Speaking of Photoshop, let's jump in and look at some examples. All right, let's use this comic book page from Star Atlas Core, a comic that I'm working on at the moment as an example. The first thing that is happening here is the idea of overlapping shapes. And this is where I've got these sort of steam elements coming up. And it's easy to see that they are kind of overlapping other elements within the scene. I have some elements here that are sort of in the middle ground. I've got some elements that are in this sort of table in the middle middle ground here and that is kind of overlapping these characters which are sort of also in the middle ground and all of that is overlapping these sort of shadowed characters in the background and again these other elements here. We can see I've got that basic concept playing out with the sort of steam you know rising out of the environment here. The steam itself is overlapping the steam and the steam is overlapping the characters and other elements within the environment. You can see here that if I look at the pipes along the ground, that we have a simple arrangement where some of these pipes are overlapping other pipes, are overlapping other pipes, right? It's both gonna tell the story of depth just through having lots of depth overlap, and it's also going to give the overall sort of scene an opportunity for us to tell the story of depth through the fact that those things that are overlapping each other get sort of, you know, they change in value or temperature as they move from the foreground to the middle ground. You can also see the same concept happening in the sort of ceiling area here, where I've got, again, a very simple construct, lots of like pipes floating in the air, but again, they're just overlapping each other. This concept of simple overlapping shapes is a fundamental tenet of all good composition. If you're trying to create depth within a scene, it is, as some have said, uh, the fundamental principle of all sort of image making, right? It's just having nice overlaps. So the more you do this, the more depth there's gonna be in your scene. Again, even if you're not trying to create some crazy, um, you know, dynamic image, right? It's still really, really important. All right, now the second thing here is where we have a foreground, middle ground, and background. So in this image, what you can see is that the foreground is essentially the steam and these pipes that are lying on the ground. So even though they're on the ground, they're really kind of showing us where that sort of foreground element that's much closer to the viewer is. The middle ground is the characters and the little kind of table um, situation in the middle. And the background is again, everything sort of behind there. Having foreground, middle ground, background, doesn't necessarily have to be something formalized, right? It's just things are overlapping other things, but always considering that, you know, if you have just sort of a middle ground and a background, 
background, but you don't really have anything close to the camera, that's always going to make it harder to show depth and tell the story of depth within the scene. In a similar way, you know, if you don't have a background, if you just got some stuff in the foreground and some stuff in the middle ground, again, it's going to be harder to tell this depth story and harder to sell that to your viewer. The third thing that's happening here is atmospheric perspective. Now, let's just take off the grade so that we can sort of get back to what is the fundamental sort of, you know, underlying blocks of the image. Um, so here we go. This is kind of what we've got. And you can see that what I've done here is, again, just try and make sure that I'm separating through atmospheric perspective all of the different layers within that image. And what that essentially means is you can think of it as sort of smoking or fogging up a scene. It means that things that are further away are going to get a little bit more sort of gray, a little bit more foggy. You can sort of dial this up to an extreme or you can just do it very subtly. Either way, this is going to be a great way to make sure that you have depth within a scene. You can see here I've actually taken all of those layers off. And all that I'm doing is just kind of progressively adding bit by bit a little bit of atmosphere into the scene just by putting essentially big marks of airbrush between all of these different layered elements. So pretty simple concept there. Now, the fourth thing here is the idea of telling the story of depth within a scene. And that is a little bit more of an amorphous global concept. And the way I want to describe it is by showing you the thumbnailing process and the overall process for creating this particular image. Okay, so what we have here is a look at the thumbnail, the plan for the image, also then the finish lines, and lastly, the color with all the effects and all of that stuff you saw before. Now, the idea of telling the story of depth within the scene is often just a matter of at the outset, thinking about what elements you have to work with with your particular scene that are going to allow you to accentuate the feeling of depth. So when I started making this image, I thought, okay, we're in this kind of crazy robot laboratory thing. What elements do we have? And I started with saying, hey, there's going to be wires all over the ground. I can use them to help me tell the story of depth. And then I also said, well, what else have we got? Well, we got wires on the ceiling kind of hanging down. I'm just sort of imagining what happens in a scene like this where you've got sort of chaos. You know, if you go into someone's workshop, there's just stuff everywhere. None of it makes sense. And this is just an iconographic way of representing that. So I'm sh telling that story of depth along the ground i'm telling it in the air and uh, you know in the in the sky up above there and that is all stuff that's laid in at the beginning at that initial phase what i'm doing is planning and sort of saying okay what are these elements here how do i put them there and how do i plan to put these stuff into the image that's going to allow me to accentuate the depth. What I do then is a little bit more of a detailed version of that, a construction drawing, a pencil phase, as you will. It's not that detailed because I'm trying to be really fast here. But again, the idea is to just try and accentuate again and highlight in all areas where I can show things overlapping each other, um, again, sort of wrapping around each other. And all of these things will just keep telling that story. Oh, there's depth. This thing's in front of this thing. That thing's in front of that thing, right? Just understanding here in the general idea, I'm like, well, okay, there's pipes, right? That's step one. The second thing is, well, what pipes are there? Well, how can I sort of put more in to help me show the story? And again, the more I have things overlapping things, the more that story of depth starts to come to life. Okay, so this image is a scene. It's got a lot of different elements in it, and those actually can help us to tell the story of depth. What happens when you just have a simple character or a much more basic image that you still need to be visually interesting and you want to add depth to? Now, you don't always need to do this, but this is a good example of how that can happen. Depending on what your goals are, you might not actually need to or want to add heaps of depth to your scenes. Flatness can be good for many reasons, but Again, here's another example of where I just have a character and what I'm doing is kind of almost overlaying their thoughts or the abstract nature of how they're feeling behind them. And there's this sort of asteroids and this broken planet behind them. And that's related to what they're saying. And I'm sort of using this basic idea of that overlapping, again, the sky and a lot of sort of debris. And just, again, trying to create a series of sort of not heaps of depth, but just, again, some level of complexity. So again, doesn't matter what you, you know, are doing. You don't always have to be creating a scene. These ideas of just overlapping shape, even if you don't have perspective, you don't necessarily have heaps of atmospheric perspective, you can still use these basic concepts. It's just overlapping shape and the way you arrange those objects to, you know, sort of entertain the eye, to make the viewer excited, as it were.
Okay, so how do we actually do that in Photoshop? Well, I'm using a very simple technique that's allowing me to accentuate the atmospheric perspective within the scene and allow me to better adjust the tonal relationships between foreground, middle ground, background, etc. I'm just putting a lot of different elements on different layers. So what I do is I create the plan for the image and I just sort of think about that as a two dimensional image. What's this going to look like when it's finished? When I do the lines, often what I'm actually doing is making sure that I put the foreground Background elements on their own layer, the background elements on their own layer, etc., etc. The characters are going to be on their own layer, and that allows me to kind of manipulate it as you saw with that sort of finished image. So, just to illustrate that basic point, what we have here is we have a situation where I've got these things here uh, on their own layer, so I can move them around. I never would move them around, but again, that illustrates that they're on their separate layer. And again, you know, behind and in front of them, I have some atmospheric perspective, which is just, you know, airbrushing some sort of gray, mushy, slightly cool, temperatured sort of paint in between them, right? Very, very simple idea. All I'm doing is just repeating that basic idea again and again and again. And this is just helping me to tell the story of depth using atmosphere perspective and it easily allows me to you know change the tonality right of what's there you know I could easily sort of say hey you know let's add a you know an adjustment layer and make sure that you know everything sort of behind the characters is green right very easy for me to adjust that and sort of dial in exactly where we want to go in terms of the overall temperature the overall color the overall tonality etc of the image once I've created the base atmospheric sort of depth within the scene, I can just sort of add a few sort of effects, color adjustments, final tweaks to make sure that we are sort of looking in the right place. And that's really it. That's all that I'm doing to make sure that I've got depth and sort of dimensionality within this page. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Just some quick ideas to help you get more depth and dimensionality within your scene. Let me know down below if you've got any comments or questions. I'd love to know what you think of a shorter format like this. Other than that, we'll catch you around. Happy drawing.